Okay, so just some uh, quick reminders. Uh, each candidate is going to have 30 seconds, of course, to introduce themselves, and then we'll do a minute per question. Um, I would like the audience members, if you guys can uh, refrain from clapping to the end, just because for the mics. Um, also, if you do have any questions, audience members, please don't forget to write them down, put your hand up, and someone will come get them for you. Okay, so, postgraduate officer. Um, in recent years, this role has included issues such as delayed stipend payments, inconsistent pay for postgraduate students who teach and childcare. And so I'm going to introduce our candidates now. So first of all, we have Olivia Edwards, Ross Taylor, Juliana Spora, Mohib Abid Khan, and also... Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it took me seven years. <laughs> um, so, actually, would you like to start, Jim? Um, sure. Um, hi, my name's Jim, and I'm running the post Residence Officer. I'm an LLM student, but more importantly, I'm a part of numerous societies across UCL, um, film society, barbell soccer, American football, and this has truly enriched my student experience here at UCL. So my main priority um, when I become post residence officer is to, oh, um, yeah, is to um, ensure that both current and post rest and future post rest students have an equally enriching experience. Thank you. Hi guys. I'm Hoi Khan and I believe that the postgraduate population which consists of like 60% of the entire student population here at UCL. I believe their voice should be heard and on campus and beyond campus, and they should be provided the best education experience they can have whilst at UCL. I have been a part of similar roles in my previous university, and currently I'm the UCL Department Ambassador and also my course rep. So I'm aware of the opportunities which can be created to foster a positive growth. Besides that, my manifesto, I, I, can, I try to make it a bit new and more realistic. Of course, I will carry on the work which was done by the previous sabbatical officers, but I will also some, uh, put in some new things which I want to work towards. Thank you. So, hi, I'm Juliana. Um, my main goal is to create a sense of social belonging within the postgraduate community. Because I think when you only spend one year here when you're doing your master or your, your PhD, is that you cannot really feel the, the sense of belonging within uh, UCL. So especially as social isolation not only harm well-being and um, mental health, it also has effect on actual intellectual achievements. So that's why I want to create a community where every student feels included and so that they can excel in their respective field. Hi, I'm Ross. I'm a student activist that's been involved in campaigns for a number of years, including solidarity with the UCU, uh, justice workers campaigns, and cut the rent. I think a lot of the problems that we face as students are linked to the marketisation of higher education. And the best way to fight that is to have radical direct action campaigns run by students in solidarity with unions uh, in order to unite for our, our common interests. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm an MA education student and I'm also a student academic representative on that course. Um, so if elected as a postgraduate students officer, um, I would really want to work together with the other um, sabbatical officers and other union officers to make student experiences better at UCL. Um, and that would include working on student spaces, funding for mental health resources, um, fair pay for grad students, excessive attendance monitoring, especially for international students, um, and academic experiences thus far are all here, and also a sense of community. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start with our first pre-written question. This is, how would you create more of a community amongst postgraduate students? Would anyone like to go first? Yes? So, as I said previously, social isolation can not only impact well-being and mental health, but actually also intellectual achievement and academic performance. 
So it's really important first to create this community by improving well-being. That means more social activities, still not too long because we all have a very uh, precise timeline, timetable, etc. to attend to. But then it also includes key expectation structure program that may help to counteract and even treatment and that could actually affect the community. Okay, thank you. So, um, yes. Um, yeah, I agree completely with um, Juliana. Um, the truth is, um, post graduate students don't really get involved in society kind of activities at UCL, partly because their course is so transient, only here for a year, at best two, and as a result, we probably don't feel like we um, can commit to societies as much as I believe on the part of students they can. But this is a flawed belief. For instance, I'm part of so many societies, and I know how much my um, students' experience has benefited from that. So my process would probably to be to try and quash this flawed belief by um, perhaps having a group of students who are going to be in each faculty and try and informally encourage students to join societies and also propose a specific day, a specific festival, probably working alongside the Freshers' Fair where societies market themselves specifically to postgrads to show how that they can actually help postgrad students and their own students experience. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, one way I would try to help foster a sense of community is by working with the um, academic reps on specific courses because I think although we want to, you know, people not to feel like a part of UCL as a whole, I think feeling like set part of a community can start really small like on the level of your course if you're in a taught master's or in your faculty if you're in a research master's. So I want to work with, with student reps for that and maybe create like more events, especially at the beginning of the year for people to get to know each other. And one other way is by continuing to, to work on some of the initiatives that have already been started with um, part-time and mature students and like, groups for them so that they can form a community too. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that is basically one of the points I was just mentioned in my manifesto, which is trying to engage those graduates to feel more welcome in the community and not with that because as you can see the support provided by the university is geared more towards undergraduate who they are here for like three years, whereas postgraduates you really have to ask to give their best. And so this is something which has to be looked into. And as mentioned, I believe a quota system should be introduced. Uh, where postgraduates and undergraduates are provided equal opportunities. Um, it doesn't matter if it's in the SU, S jobs, or S positions, or even if, like, if you look at the accommodation provided, like more accommodations are creating towards undergraduates than postgraduates. So this is something that we can work towards. Okay, and finally, Yeah, so I completely agree with the majority of what's already been said, but I think on top of that, we also have shared interests, um, so inbuilt communities in terms of our economic interests as students, in terms of our interests in liberation campaigns, etc. Um, so I think a large part of building meaningful communities, uniting around those interests and working towards furthering them collectively, uh, so that involves support for campaigns to benefit student interests um, of, of a variety of sorts. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to go to our questions from the audience. Um, we have our first question is from Benny. If you'd like to just put your hand up, and then one of our team will come over to you so you can ask your question. In terms of issues, in terms of issue for postgraduate students, Grace, you guys have mentioned about the language, which is a big issue. And um, what other issues do you think postgraduate students face, especially female postgraduate students, and how would you tackle them? Okay, thank you. Would anyone like to start? Um, you what the point you said, sorry. Um, you've mentioned how belonging is an issue. Belonging. Yeah. What other issues would postgraduate students face, especially female postgraduate <coughs> students, and how would you tackle them? Yeah, so especially if you're from abroad as an international student, so things can be a bit more different because there's some culture and difference and they come from different backgrounds. 
So I think international students are considered 45 percent of the global student population here at UCL. So something can be done to accommodate their needs and interests, such as having workshops, and so that they can understand the system more. And also, like something to do with, uh, of course, if you come to a university as a UCL, so that you can have a great career. And to have a great career, I think we need a, a career service which is focused mainly towards post values. There's a really short time over here, and the uni and the academic staff have to give the best so that they can prosper. So, I mean, it could be as simple as have, helping them with online applications, especially with the psychometric tests. Like, currently, there isn't much support given by the university to help with the psychometric tests. And this is where, like, most of the students, including me, lack. But this is something which can be worked on. Well, yes, you are right. There are numerous issues that affect um, postgraduate students. For instance, one of the core points that we all of us have challenge is the postgraduate pay, which um, we still have been running campaigns for um, for numerous years, and we're looking to drive that forward as well. Well, other issues also include um, bursaries and funding for parents and carers. We still can actually contribute a lot more to that, and there are some qualities that we could have that would definitely help that. And, um, and this is as possible, so I'm going to jump for a moment. But then, yes, um, yeah. um, these are things that you still need to be focused on, basically. Sorry. Okay. So, um, another problem, unfortunately, is mental health, of course. A lot of students are suffering under the pressure of uh, graduate school. And we can't expect it to have this pressure. So, a lot of students actually do not seek help because they think this is a normal, a normal way of living. Um, especially a recent survey showed that on two time postgrads there are um, those sorry, the student postgrads are actually six times likelier to be um, suffering of severe depression or anxiety than the general population. So that shows that there's still a big problem. Even though we came already a good way with new fundings, there's still a problem of mental health in the postgraduate community. So that's why I think it could be interesting to create a um, counseling service, that especially for postgraduate students. Uh, this has been done in UC Berkeley, and it seems to work very well. So that could be a first step that I think should be very interesting to do. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, well, I mean, so absolutely, I fully agree uh, talking about um, Postgraduate teacher pay um, is, is very, very poor. It's been worked out uh, by the postgraduate officer two years ago that when you, that when you factor in all the overtime that's being uh, done uh, by a lot of teaching assistants uh, and level that pay out with that, they're actually earning under London living wage, which is completely unacceptable when you see our claims to be a living wage employer. Um, in terms of women's specific issues, I don't want to talk on behalf of women. Um, but I think anyone who's been paying attention will see the instances of sex and violence as well as reckless violence decreased across campuses all over the UK. Um, so a lot needs to be done uh, to, to tackle that, and that involves engaging directly with those communities within our, our university. And then likewise, we mentioned bursaries and childcare. 10% um, of UCL students have care and responsibilities, uh, in 2017 anyway. Uh, it's probably gone up uh, since. Um, and um, not only are they overwhelmingly postgraduate students, they're also overwhelmingly women. Um, as mentioned, we definitely have the resources at the university um, to provide those services. It's to do with whether we prioritise faculty new buildings and higher salaries for vice chancellors, or whether we prioritise the well-being of students. So I completely agree with everything that everyone has said already. Um, and uh, yeah, speaking of the care responsibilities that a lot of women you know, face, uh, and a lot of postgraduate students, but especially women, I, I personally know someone who had to miss a lecture because they couldn't, she couldn't find childcare, and so I think that should be something that should never happen. And so I agree that UCL should provide childcare for students and also staff. Uh, yeah, please. Okay, thank you. And now I believe that we have a second. Question from the audience. <coughs> so, Sandra from Natural Sciences, if you'd like to, perfect, a member of our team is going to come to you right now um, with your 
to ask you a question? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when speaking to postgraduate students about selection, a lot of people that I spoke to said that um, postgraduate officers tend to focus on master students, who tend to be the most transient in the population, which is fantastic. But um, they wanted me to ask you about PhD students. So how will you, how will you support the issues that PhD students face? Um, how will you tackle those issues? Um, have you thought about PhD students and their struggles at UCI? Thank you. Should we go in the same order as we did before? Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Sure. Like, yes, students, uh, this, is, this issue is really important as we mentioned in the manifestos by the post graduate students completed this year as well as previous years. So, as I said before, like, in a child, they have some PhDs, they come with families over there. So, that point has been discussed before, when I look at them. If a child can decide that, better pay is one of the more issues which has to be uh, uh, paid and brought to the really well. So that's how I can do it. Thank you. Okay, um, the one issue on all of my professors that almost specifically um, regards the agency most exclusively is the PhD, so PGTA pay. A majority of PGTAs are using our postgraduate students, and this campaign has been running for a long time. But to be honest, we still haven't really made that much progress in increasing PGTA pay since actually 2011. Um, we really need to drive all these campaigns and ensure that PGTAs are paid more by involving more PGTAs in our actual campaign activities. We can actually make significant progress in the coming year. So the one issue that specifically affects PG, PhD students is PGTA pay, and that will be a significant focus of mine if I become your postgraduate student. Thank you. Okay, so a big problem with PhD students is that actually if they want to go to conferences, they have to pay first. And there's a problem with reimbursement policies. And so I will try to create accounts, bank accounts that are linked with the granting institution, maybe the lab or hospital or the other part of the with working together. And then there's also the PhD stipend that's uh, a big problem, which is very sparse and sometimes has a long delay. So this is a very challenging question, but I think first we need to address the question, we need to find a solution, and then try to actually implement it. Okay, thank you. And what's the Yeah, so likewise, I think the primary issue which specifically affects PhDs uh, is, is the PGTA pay. Um, but it goes beyond just recognising that as an issue. The question is how do we campaign for it? Um, as I mentioned, there's been a campaign that's existed for several years uh, run by the UCU, Universities and College Union, uh, called Fair Play for UCL Teaching Assistants, but it has dried up. I think the main way that we always push for uh, better our interests is collectively, and so I think the, the primary focus should be encouraging uh, PGTAs to engage with the UCU, become members of that union, and then join in solidarity with the other staff to campaign for those interests. Beyond that, having been students for so long, often many PhDs uh, are suffering with even more financial issues than e even we are as, as masters or undergrad students, um, and therefore issues such as rent affect them far more sparsely than they might affect other students. So I think it's really key that we work with not only campaigns such as UCL Cut Rent to push down rates on campus and improve quality of housing, but also to work within the wider city uh, with campaigns such as London Renters Union to make sure that we're trying to push down rents across London. Um, granted, it's a very big demand, but given that rent is something that specifically targets students so much, I think it should be a much bigger focus of our campaign, especially on behalf of PhDs. Thank you. We'd just like to bring So I agree with things that have already been said. In addition, I think that PhD students might also benefit from feeling more like a part of the UCL community. Well, although they may be here for a long time, they may be doing work very independently. And so while some of them might not want to engage as much because they have outside lives, I think, like, if I were elected as a um, postgraduate officer, I want to bring the postgrad or the um, PhD students into the community where I find out what what, besides these things that I've already mentioned, they want to be able to do for them. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions we have from the audience. So thank you to all the candidates. Thank you.